Well, hey everybody, welcome to Passion Purpose Podcast. We've been talking about unity the last couple of weeks, and I love this. I mean, this yeah. is the topic we need to be talking about. Uh, so, hey, we're so blessed to have Francis and Lisa Chan with us, and special guest, the Queen, right. is here, yes. Laura Seibert, yes. my wow. wife, 36 years. Come on, come on, be a little more, come on, enthusiastic. All right, and uh, and we got our buddy Michael Rodriguez with us. Uh, Michael's going to help us talk about stuff that matters. So throw some softballs, Michael. Man, I love that. And and what I love most is when, you know, this eclectic group of people here <laughs> constitutes about a hundred years of marriage. I'll throw my wife and my wow. tenure wow. in there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah. so what I love about that, when we talk about something like unity in marriage, mm. right? We think maybe, perhaps over the the totality of our ten years together. Yeah. What I'd love to hear you guys talk about is what does unity in our marriages look like day to day? Mm. Day to day, day to day. Hey, I'll just jump out here, and this will this will be definitely all over the place. But you know, one of the things that I started doing, I don't know, three or four years ago, is when I pray over our marriage every morning, I see us holding hands. This, I mean, we do that many times ourselves, but I see us holding hands, and I recommit to the covenant, mm. and I say, Jesus, I after I connect with the Father, with mm. Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. That's kind of my routine devotionally. And then I say, now, Lord, I recommit. I'm going to get a little teary here. Mm -hmm. Recommit to this covenant you've given us. And we, I come under your rule and reign and your power. Mm -hmm. And I recommit to this woman this day mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I believe that God is the one who holds marriage yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And God's the only one that can produce unity. So that's mm -hmm. one little practical mm -hmm. that came to my mind. Yeah. yeah. What that's about great. you guys? I think um, when you first asked that Michael comes to my mind is a um, wrap around what Jamie said. But I think it's Psalm 68 where um, cries out, unite my heart to fear your name. It's a prayer from I mean, 86. It's 86. Thank yep. you. Um, well, this like yeah. there. And so um, anyway, and so I, yeah, I just think the same thing is if we put Jesus the center every day mm -hmm. and my desire is to walk in holiness and and love his ways and it lines things up it lines yeah. things up in our communication and what we're about in that day even how we respond to each other mm -hmm. when i'm first and foremost working with my relationship vertically it makes us unified this way yeah. so hmm. mm -hmm. yeah it takes awesome. a lot of work yeah <laughs> i'm just saying no, super <laughs> convicting i mean again like we've talked about how we're so different <laughs> Like, I don't do that. You know, like, I, I don't go I don't every we'll morning, this recommit our, I might, yeah, I might, do I don't know. I don't know what my issue is. I, like, and you think, how are we united? Like, we're, I mean, we are united, but how did we get there? You know, I can listen to that. And I'm like, oh, it's the answer to prayer. It's, you know, it's, sure. this, this is, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I go, we're united, but I, I don't know. Well, I, I, was, I was thinking really, really practical of like, oh, I think for me, um, many times I'm trying to take, like, sometimes scriptures jump out and you take them so literally, like, uh -huh. consider... What, like consider others more significant than yourself. Yeah. Right. That is hard to do because that is not natural. I right. naturally right. consider myself mm -hmm. very significant, yeah. what I want, what I think. Right. And so I think one of the things I have learned to fight for is like, mm. oh, his socks are turned inside out. Or like, you know how they just rip their socks off and they throw them in the laundry? Mm -hmm. I don't know oh, if yeah. Jimmy does this, but anyways, <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, that. you know what? I can honor my husband. I can just flip his socks mm. the other way. Wow. Like there's just little tiny things where I'm trying to like think in my heart, how can I, he, he may not even see it or know it. You probably know. Have no, you I, ever thought about no, flipping think your about socks that. together? <laughs> no, thank you though. But I'm I not. do that like sure. before the Lord to think, go. I just want to can try to consider him more significant than myself because mm -hmm. there are times when mm -hmm. I'm just frustrated or annoyed. Sure. There's a sure. fight, there's whatever, but the day to day, yeah. like the little things yeah. that I can do to be like excited to honor him clean his side of the bed, you know, even once in a blue moon, like vacuum out his car. I don't know. It's just like those little things where I can consider him. And that's just a very like 
physically practical thing. I love the spiritual about this. Uh, well, and maybe that's why we're united. Is she does it all, and keeps us together. Well, and I think that that's a great point that you bring up, Lisa, because one of the other aspects of this unity notion, I like to think in word pictures. So I think of puzzle pieces. And if you set up two puzzle pieces next to one another, yeah. they're different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you find the right two puzzle pieces, they right. fit together and there's almost no visible seam to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you guys think about how in your marriages, the unity that you pursue and share, mm -hmm. how does that come from the fact that you're different shaped puzzle pieces mm -hmm. that come together just so? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I'll jump in there. What's coming to mind is I'm thinking about um, Jimmy made a comment once. It's like our marriage, we're not competing for each other. We're not competing against each other. We're complementing each other. And that can be hard for someone like me who's mm -hmm. more of a, I mean, he's an out there person. Just, um, yeah, always preaching, sharing, very confident yeah, yeah. and upfront, you know, like that. And first time responded really quick. I first time respond in different ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can get insecure, like, oh, I don't really want to be on the spot like that. But whatever God's given me to do, and uh, we just talk about, hey, you don't be like me. I don't want you to be yes. like me. Is what yeah. you'll say. I want you. Yeah. To, we complement each other, and yeah. so yeah. not trying to be look at that as the strengths coming together. That's what kind of comes. To well, me. and mm -hmm. even I mean, you know, even um, on the marriage side, I'm I'm saying I don't want you to be like this other woman. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like if she's comparing, like I'm not a That's strong true. enough leader or out front person. Or I said. I don't need you to be that. I don't want you to be that. And so I'm able to affirm her to say, I need you to be who you are because back to the puzzle, we fit better together. Right. Um, I'm not trying to, we're not trying to compete with each other. Right. Please don't try to be me. And of course you don't want me to try to be you. That wouldn't be helpful either. But um, yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I do think it's such a big deal, right? Because we're all trying to find ourselves and then we're trying to, love our spouse and then we're trying to be significant, purposeful, you yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 the way, the way I think we've said the last few years is, Hey, are we leaning in mm -hmm. on this issue or are we pulling apart? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to lean in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess on that one, um, I think once you start having kids too, yeah. you start realizing how much they need both of you. Yes. Oh. Right. Cause yeah. You know, I remember one time um, my daughter, Rachel, when she was she was talking to a friend and uh, the, her 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 friend's mom was this Asian lady. Awesome. You know, Susan, just like uh, and dad is Caucasian like you and uh, and you and you. <laughs> no. OK. <laughs> but anyways, it, it was just this whole idea they were just comparing like me with this other mom, like uh -huh. Uh -huh. we are so similar, like just right. go, go, go. And uh, and the two kids were just saying, could you imagine if they were married? <laughs> like it would be so miserable to be their child. You know, like yeah, it was just yes. like they're two alike. And I just laugh at that. I go, yeah, but you'd be hecka smart and you'd be like, like crazy. But they're just like, we'd have no fun. They're just, but, but just the, the way you, you see it really in parenting. Like, oh, I'm yeah. so glad she's here. Cause if it was just me raising yeah. them, here's how they would turn out. And if it was just her raising them, here's how they turn out. And you really see that seamlessness. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so glad yeah. we do this together. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking almost abstractly, like um, the puzzle pieces being different is not an issue because it's like we're trying to complete a picture that's yes. much bigger right. than us. <laughs> so I was yeah. thinking, oh, yeah. that's really beautiful because you can kind of you can kind of just find your hidden identity in this mm -hmm. grand scheme mm -hmm. of like, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're part of God's picture, what oh. He's painting, yes. what He's like weaving together as this amazing mm -hmm. story. And so we just kind of get mm. lost in that. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. You picked up what I was throwing out there. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Wow. One person. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also thinking, um, and I think you guys talked about it during the conference today, 
you know, there's a lot of younger folks that were in the audience, a lot of right. younger right. folks that are tuning into this podcast sure. who are looking to people like us uh -huh. who have tenure to us, we'll call it sure. that, and we'll call it age, we'll call it tenure. <laughs> and, and they're wondering, because at least for us in our marriage, and I'm sure you guys too, especially in the earlier years, mm. Yeah. There were challenges getting to this point of unity and there were times mm -hmm. we were in sync and it was marvelous and other times we we're out of sync and we're like, yeah. we can't figure out how to get in sync. Yes. What would you tell mm -hmm. these younger folks, earlier mm -hmm. stages of their marriages? Yeah. How do they get through those seasons? Yeah. I think it, some of it's like determination. Mm -hmm. um, like I can't live without peace with God yeah, and know. knowing that I'm doing what he yeah. wants me to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so if the marriage isn't right, I can't get anything done. Yeah. Um, I don't have peace with him. Yeah. Sure. And so it's really not an option. I'd say number one yeah. is yeah. there's no option here. Yeah. You know, there's no escape hatch. There's no, mm -hmm. no, if I divorce, then it's just like, oh, there's, it's going to be the worst. Gosh, and yeah. it, the, I can't accomplish what I'm called to accomplish mm -hmm. on this earth yeah. if this marriage isn't right. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes when you just know there's no other option, it's, right. it's kind of like when you yeah. kick a kid out of the house sure. and say, well, you kind of have to get a job now. Yeah. Um, you don't have a choice. I mean, I guess there's a homeless sure. shelter, but, sure. you, you know, there's yeah. just I, I think that's the mentality I have going into marriage mm -hmm. is. This has to yeah. work. Uh, and I think that's, you know, uh, this where you and I would be similar in this because we work with so many young people. And of mm -hmm. course, we have adult children, so it's mm -hmm. not like we haven't raised our own kids. But we just, the thing that we said, and it's it's not a, there's a, there's funny, you know, somebody would always say, divorce isn't an option, murder has been considered, <laughs> right? Yeah, so that's the old the old funny. Yeah. But let's, let's take the serious side of that. When it's not an option, you will work through it. Yeah. My concern for young people today yeah. is empathy has become so central. Yes. If I do not feel validated yes. and loved, yes. I will break a covenant. Yes. Yes. I mean, that, that almost brings yes. tears to my eyes. Yes. You, don't, yes. you don't break a covenant yes. because you yeah. don't feel good yeah. in relating to somebody. Yeah. Now, and we're talking believers. Right, like the, I mean, we're talking two yeah. believers yeah. that know Jesus, mm -hmm. that are serious mm -hmm. about their faith, yeah. right? Because you can't, we're not even we're not even on the playing field here if you're not mm -hmm. a Jesus follower, Absolutely. right? We got other challenges. But if we are Jesus followers, we said divorce isn't an option. So yeah. we, there are so many times, we, we even as young kids, you know, in our early 20s, we said, we just got each other, but I mean, this is it. This is what we got to work yeah. with. Right. Like we made the covenant. Yeah. This is what we've got to work with. Yeah. So we can either fight it, we can lean into it. And of course, then when you resolve that I'm not walking out, I'm yeah. leaning in, mm -hmm. then I reach out to the older mentor. Then we go to the marriage yeah. conference. Then we mm -hmm. say whatever it takes. Then we fast and pray. You start using your tools when there's clarity around the result. Yeah. There you go. That's great. There you yeah. Go. Yeah, that? no, I would rather. I think back to when we, a couple things come to mind, but um, would say definitely, I love what you said, reaching out for help, mm -hmm. not hiding in shame, first of all. If, if yeah. you're having, I mean, it's a process. Mm -hmm. You have two sure. independent people coming together under a power of covenant. So yeah. it is possible by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But I always encourage, going back to our early days, is um, yeah, just getting in life on life community, getting vulnerable and letting people see that, oh, you're having that too. Cause sometimes the yeah. enemy wants to isolate you and go, this mm -hmm. is just the us only person, and yeah. we are just messing it up. And I think when you get into a place where you can share mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, you have that, you've dealt with that too. It just brings the conversation to our normalcy and then going to Jesus. So mm -hmm. that was the first thing I thought. Mm -hmm. And then developing a really good habit of encouraging each other. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. just complimenting each other, some of the mm -hmm. best places we've been, mm -hmm. we've been in and out of that, to be honest, but it's like, you know, practicing gratitude, like mm -hmm. even at night, these exercises, like tell me three mm -hmm. things. I mean, especially yeah. when we're not in sync. That's yeah. what, let's talk about not being in sync. If we're not in sync, Jimmy will be like, or usually him, I'll just be honest. He'll say, okay, let's let's talk about three things that you're thankful for today about me. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, just give me a second to think, you know. But it does, it begins to put it back in perspective, you know, because the, it's tendency just to get off on your train of whatever 
thing that bugged you in that day. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just real life. So mm-hmm. practicing gratitude, okay. I think, is huge. Pulling people into your life quicker. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I would just say, um, obviously, my biggest heart is thinking of young women. And I mm-hmm. think, um, I know for myself, like, I needed to learn to be a good follower. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of tension can come when you're not when you want to lead also, or (laughs) Um, when Francis and I were first married, we took this test, you know, and the pastor puts us across the table and he like pushes the test towards us. And he's like, you guys both tested off the chart domineering for dominant, you know, it was like, and he goes, this could be a problem. (laughs) And I'm thinking, um, I don't know. At that moment, I was just thinking like, what? Why? We'll have no problems, yeah. right? As most young brides do before they actually get right. married. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, so it was a process to learn how to be able to be like strong and yeah. and fun and use yeah. gifts for the Lord, but also be like, wow, I need to know when it's time to just say, you know what? Um, I want to have the heart of like... Uh, Jonathan's armor bearer. I think about him a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's just like, I'm with you, heart and soul. I've said that a couple times to mm-hmm. him. Like, honey, yeah. I'm your armor bearer. Mm-hmm. Like, I will be the one that says, go do what's in your heart. I'm with you, heart and soul. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we may die together, so but times, yeah. I'm with you, you yes. know? Yeah. And so you just want to like have that heart. As a young wife, I was a little mm-hmm. bit more feisty, you yeah. know? Um, but just learning to be like, there's something really beautiful about learning to follow well and let him lead yeah, and yeah. be gracious, learn mm-hmm. to give him the benefit of my insight and my convictions mm-hmm. and my prayers, but also just trusting God's going to lead through him yeah. Yeah. and he's going to make mistakes. Yeah. And some of them are going to be like, oh, whoops, that probably wasn't the best decision. And other times I'm totally wrong. And it's like, wow, that was such an amazing decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But That's both good. ways were covered by yeah. God's yes. grace and goodness. Yes. And we learn mm-hmm. and it's all fine. Yeah. So yeah. you're just so worried that it's like, if we don't do it the way I think it should be done, yeah. at least I did when yeah. I was younger. Um, and it's not true. So yeah. don't believe the enemy. Amen. On all things. <laughs> On all things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That's such great wisdom. And I would say, too, um, you know, there's an old saying that I'm familiar with that says, where you stand depends on where you sit. Mm-hmm. And so your ability to choose in that moment mm-hmm. how you're going to see that if this is either we're going down in flames or, you know, we're going on an adventure and it might end <laughs> bad, but it's going to be great along the way. <laughs> But I also think that there, you know, perhaps there are some listeners who are coming from a background where they're saying, you know, this whole thing of unity is great, but I've never seen that before. Mm. Yeah, exactly. How Mm. would you encourage folks that are coming from that sort of background where they they don't even know what that means? Yeah. Mm. So, so maybe this is kind of our, our, our wrap question for the day, because I think we want to emphasize this here. Yeah. So, um, Francis was talking about in the conference, but. <clears throat> we we all live in the shadow of our family of origin, right? Mm-hmm. Period, mm-hmm. right? I'm a born again, spirit filled man, mm-hmm. loves God, mm-hmm. consecrated to Jesus first, and I live in the shadow of my family mm-hmm. of origin. So I'm not subservient to that. Right. I have victory over it. I have the ability to mm-hmm. overcome and to live a different life, but it is still present. So that makes me dependent mm-hmm. on God to live a different way. Mm-hmm. So Laura and I, we, uh, you know, uh, uh, my family situation is a little rougher. Laura had much more solid family. But <clears throat> when we got married, we said, all right, how do we want to live our lives? And what we did is we took all the scriptures on marriage and we just said, before we read a marriage book, we're going to read all the scriptures on marriage. Wow. Did the same thing for parenting mm-hmm. and said, all right, so then God and his word are our centerpiece, not the shadow of our family or not, you know, because again, to try to be a little more concise and throw the ball around here is, because you have two things, you have an overreaction. I'm never going to be like my parents Mm -hmm. and you end up being just like them out of your judgment and your bitterness, your unforgiveness, or you don't realize how much you are trying to mirror what you had and you're hurting mm. the other one, right? Yeah. You know, you're hurting your spouse. Yeah. And you don't even know it because that's what you had to model. Yeah. And so I think that you, the, the awareness of family of origin mm. stuff is only to take us to the cross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not to give us an excuse 
for not being godly, mm -hmm. not being honoring, not being loving, not being a Philippians 2 person. Mm -hmm. So I think this, this, but without acknowledging your family of origin, you wonder, why do I keep tripping over myself? Mm -hmm. Why can't we get this ball down the road? Why can't she or mm -hmm. he just get it together? Mm -hmm. But because you have to recognize your family of origin stuff, you got to forgive everybody, mm -hmm. bless everybody, honor everybody, let everybody go and live the life that God has for you mm -hmm. with a sobriety and humility yes. mm -hmm. that I am going to become what I hated mm -hmm unless I let God shape me and change mm -hmm. me. I said a lot there, but I think mm -hmm. it's huge, awesome, huge deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, it's a great question because yeah. most people have never seen it. Yeah. I mean, vast, vast majority. Yeah. Like, so few get to see a united yeah. couple. Right. Um, I was blessed because uh, a couple let me into their home yeah. when I was 18 to live with them. Mm. Mike and Vicky, and they just had a baby. And and so that's a big deal to let yeah. this guy come in and I know where to live. And and it was the first time I had seen it. Like, whoa, he's an awesome husband. Like, it just, just I'd never seen a husband thank his wife for cooking dinner and, you know, and, and uh, you know, and they were, you know, in youth ministry. That's how I knew them. I was, you know, a kid in the youth group and they... Sure. Let me live there, and uh, it it changed me. Where I thought I want to be like this, yeah. you know. So I got to see it, and and I think that was probably a big factor in mm -hmm. us, much like you guys, like always having an open home with people living with us, sure. and all these people because I realized, well, I got to see it, and mm -hmm. and I could go into marriage thinking, okay, what would Mike do in this situation? What would Mike That's do in this yeah. situation? Yeah, awesome. And uh, I realized I would never have gotten like mm. no, I just thank God for that, right. and so, and so we've done that for people, and we've allowed you know, and now the people that have lived with us, they're doing it for people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think of yeah. how many mm. seriously hundreds yeah. of people yes. are doing this because yes. Mike made that decision, wow. right. and then I found out from him a little while ago. He goes, oh, when I was eighteen, wow. someone did it for me. Yeah. I'm like, wow. what? So, wow. so it's yes. like, gosh, how many hundreds, thousands yes. of disciples were made yes. because of that one guy? I don't even know yeah. his name, sure. and how many people he did that for, and then how many people did yes. that, and now we yes. do it, and then yeah. you know. And so I just, I just want to encourage people that are listening yes. that maybe do have a strong marriage, yes. like. Okay, are yeah, are you home? Oh, yes. Yeah, like this absolutely. whole privacy thing is a very American, yeah. Yeah. not biblical yeah. concept. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Example is huge. Yeah. Wow. That's so, great. You, you want to tell us, sort of, Kyle and Carolyn? Remember, they were at our table a lot. I'll, I'll get it going. You Why jump don't in you there. Get it going? Yeah. Okay. So, so our uh, son-in-law came from a broken home. Yeah. And um, when uh, he, uh, he and Abby were dating and then they, they got married and uh, they were at our dinner table a lot. And then uh, there was a gal living with us. You know, we 28 of our 30 years of raising our kids, yeah. we had people living with us yeah. as big brothers, big sisters, but also we were able to mentor them. And, and we do do that till today. But um, <clears throat> Carolyn, who's now our niece-in-law, I guess you would call her, um, Carolyn, they, 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 uh, they both came from very difficult homes. Mm -hmm. And Kyle was telling, they, they were pulled each other aside after months and they said, what, what is it that we love about this table? Like, what, what is it mm. that they were kind of comparing notes from their broken mm. lives mm. and they were saying, we keep waiting for the bomb to drop mm -hmm. Mm. and it never does. Mm. Yeah. We keep waiting for the blow up to yeah. happen that yeah. splits the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was their conclusion yeah. mm. and it never does. Yeah. Maybe it's possible that you never have to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tangs the trajectory of their lives. They yeah. have they have incredible healthy marriages, loving their kids mm -hmm. these days, you know. But I thought that was so like we would not have, you know, thought just the table. Right. Yeah. You know, which is just asking questions, loving yeah. each other, laughing together, yeah. encouraging each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at times somebody would say, Hey, don't say that. That's not yeah. cool. Correcting. You know, it wasn't like Correcting. it wasn't wasn't a perfect yeah. environment, but it was a warm, loving family yeah. environment. And nobody was going to throw a chair mm. and walk off the yeah, yeah. You know, reservation here because somebody did something goofy. Yeah. And I thought, how powerful was that? Mm. Just just the table alone. Yeah. yeah. Unreal. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I was like, help me out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This yeah. Good, so, anything else? Any other thoughts on that one? You guys nailed that. I don't think I, I can add anything. <laughs> wow. Good. Good answer. I would think too. I'm just going back to a picture that came to my mind when we were talking about uni, is especially in, in context that you don't know what it looks like. Right. And you, you, you guys addressed mm. it super well. Is um, being in agreement on mission. Mm. Where, yeah. what, where yeah. are we going? Absolutely. And that might, yeah. and that's right. going to take time being in the yeah. presence of God. Yeah. Because why I think about that, <laughs> when we first, um, we, we used to always drive everywhere with our kids. And that was the day, I'm sorry, when you could take the car seats out and you remember the, <laughs> sure. the set and put on the yeah. floor and stuff. Yeah. So we would drive from Texas. We drove from Texas to Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah. We've driven all over with our kids, <laughs> right? And so, and we would have these great ideas, but we also, we learned, we got better in that. It became more fun. When we first started, what I'm trying to say is Jimmy and I go about that process differently. Mm. His process would be a destination. I want to get from here to there as fast mm. as we can go. <laughs> One bathroom per state. I mean, that's literally Jimmy's. I don't care. That's where we're going. You're right. That's how we started. Yeah. And I'm like, we're on an adventure. <laughs> like, you can stop wherever you want. If I see something cute, can we stop? Oh, I want m ms now. Get the yes. bathroom. No. Yes. But I want that. You know, and so we realized, gosh, I'm on a journey. I'm on an adventure and he's on destination. But when we learn to communicate, is is this a destination trip or is this a journey? Yes. <laughs> then it went a lot better. Does that make sense? Because his ideals came down, my ideals came down, and we came together and we discussed things. Yeah, that's good. And Great. so that's like a natural one that we had to learn. It didn't always go that. I mean, we learned that as we learned to know each other and our kids and how we work. Yeah. But I think even that with life mission, like yeah. slowing down, getting in the presence of God and saying, okay, God, what is our mission? And then when you get that, the word of the Lord together, then you start merging those things. And of course, yes. we get off a little bit, but then you can merge and go, okay, now we're on the same page and we're going after the same thing and we're going to keep having to communicate. But I would just say, if you haven't seen it modeled, mm. which we didn't, um, it just brings back a memory of that. So. Mm. That's beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Michael, let's do one last thing here. Uh, we'll extend this one a little longer than we usually do. Because again, that whole deal about mission, mm -hmm. being on mission, what are some things that you know that you guys have done, yeah, that we have you. done, that, uh, and the reason it's so important to me is that I didn't grow up in the church. So when I came mm. to Baylor, first time in my life, I was right. around church kids, and yeah. and they had all kinds of baggage, you know, like I didn't know what baggage was. I mean, I had mine, of course, but it was at least worldly baggage. I didn't understand the religious church baggage stuff. Yeah. And here was my conclusion after just observing, not even like judgmental. I yeah. just was like just observing. And I thought, as a general rule, people grew up in church all their life and they never shared the gospel and never had a devotional life that was real and genuine. Mm. But if they had those two, like the sharing the gospel, being bold with your faith, being awkwardly mm. bold, uh, and making disciples was normative, then you had an authentic walk with Jesus, mm -hmm. which meant actually you would have a devotional life because you're praying for the lost, you're wanting to grow in your faith to help somebody else grow. And so we set off from the early stage, we said, look, this is who we are now as a newly married couple. And we started having kids. We said, look, we are going to spend time with Jesus and we're going to share the gospel everywhere we go. This is our lifestyle. Whether we lived in Waco, Texas, uh, or whether we were overseas on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. It was never about the mission trip, waiting for the mission trip to be missional. Mm -hmm. right. It was, we were praying for neighbors. Every Tuesday was fast and pray for your neighbor's day. Mm -hmm. We would have people in our homes. We were always sharing the gospel when we went out. And again, mm -hmm. I say that and you say, oh, well, that's Laura and Jimmy. Look, we we are weak. Like I still have sure. to get up courage to share the gospel, which is embarrassing at this age. But I still have to purpose myself at times to say, hey, we're going to share the gospel. But I, I though there's a hundred things we could say about how we lived on mission, I think those two are unique for the church kid. If they never share the gospel and they never really have a meaningful devotional life that's real and rich for them, mm -hmm. then they're going to grow up religious. Yes. And they're either going to throw something off or rebel against something until they kind of land. Mm -hmm. But I, I just find most of at least Western Christianity is about trying to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And in the end, that thing just cycles right back on you because you're never yeah. good enough and you're never mm -hmm. you know, happy enough. That's and there's, right. there's one more thing you didn't do or should have done or would have done. But those things, sharing the gospel and, and mm -hmm. um, uh, being...
an authentic devotional life were two things I think we were able to leave our kids with because we see them doing it today. Mm-hmm. So that was a missional piece I thought that was key. What about you guys? I feel like I'm not supposed to talk and we're supposed to hit this one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I've, just, I've just been talking way I was too thinking much. of a scripture, but then now it just popped out of my head. Mm. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> just how, like, sometimes scripture is just so poignant and straight to yeah. the point. Yeah. Like, um, seek first his kingdom yes. and his righteousness and yeah. all these things will be added to you. Um, so many times, Francis actually led our family, I think, really well in in being on mission. Um, and it took different forms. Sometimes it was like early on being like, you know what, on Christmas Day, rather than having it be about more and more presents right. where they're like Sweet. flipping through these and looking at sure. you like, where's the next one? He was like, every Christmas we're going to drive down to Mexico. This is when we were in Southern California. Right. It was like a, I don't know, four or five hour drive. Mm-hmm. And we'd load the van up with gifts and we'd drive down there. And, yeah. you know, we just got creative. Like it Way just was in his heart. And he's like, let's just do this. We can drive down there. And we had no real plan. We would just cross the border. We prayed, Lord, just direct us. We don't know where we're supposed to go. And we just found a spot and we'd open the van and pretty soon whoosh, all the children were <laughs> yeah. gone. And so That's then we so learned cool. like to bring food and like we just kind of like yeah. it grew and then sometimes people would join us. So other couples in the church would be like, hey, can we come with you? That sounds cool. We want to do that on Christmas. And um, anyway, so just putting that heartbeat in your kids to be yes. like, we don't have to make everything about ourselves, but also in really like other subtle ways where sometimes you need to remove things from your life in order to yeah. think clearly and be on mission. And I think hmm. in particular this one time when he was like, you know what, you guys, I'm just really convicted about all of us needing to be in the word. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, we, you guys watch this show at nighttime, but like, mm-hmm. Why, why don't we just for a season, whatever you're going to, any screen time you're going to have, the same amount of time needs to be that mm. you've been reading the scriptures. Yeah. And we were all kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, but it's like, yeah, the girls and I especially were like, you know, well, this sucks. You know? <laughs> um, but then you end up afterwards, you're like, wow, I'm so grateful. That, yes. Uh, so that's why I do always say, you know, those are the ways, like, I'm so grateful that he just keeps us like kingdom focused. Like, let's not forget, you know, and yeah. let sometimes it's removing things yeah. Yeah. and like, let's just make sure we're spending the same amount of time yeah. inputting what's good for us. And mm-hmm. other times even just saying like, Hey, let's go a season or go yeah. a week or whatever, do a vacation with no electronics so mm-hmm. that we can just completely connect with one another, live in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so also I know because you guys have the privilege of traveling and seeing so much of what God's doing around mm-hmm. the world, that is such a blessing. Mm-hmm. But to invite our kids into those yes. adventures to Take say, with come yeah. with me. Yeah. Like yeah. even when I would go to visit, you know, neighbors, we would have extra food and I'd know there's a single guy across the street or the mm-hmm. old woman who lives mm-hmm. down here. I'm That's like, guys, beautiful. make a plate and yeah. let's, you go knock on their door yeah. and yeah. just give that Way plate to, to John, you know, and make sure Shirley has, yeah. invite her over. Let's have, you know, let's play go. card games. You remember Shirley? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, we're loving our neighbors. We're just yes. trying to, it doesn't have to be always like, I'm going to Ethiopia. Um, it's yes. like, just go to your grandma that lives down the street who's yes. lonely and wants to have little kids knock on her door and give her cookies, yes. you know? Yes. So just in those little ways, we try to just have this heartbeat of, mm-hmm. you know, let's love other people. Let's reach out. Way to go. You sound like my wife. You sound like a <laughs> boy. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, so well, many words. This is my so you get the last word, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read scripture because it's, just this like, is, it's, it's yeah. a live yeah. scripture yeah. for my, yeah. my kids and our family. I have um, One thing I do is I have different Bibles, but I write my kids' names in them. Like when you mm-hmm. read a scripture and you're like, oh, that's wonderful. I don't pray that, you know, it's really fun. So mm. I have a goal one day to to give a Bible, each kid a Bible, but they're getting pretty old and I haven't done that yet with all their names. <laughs> wow, that's good. that's good, that's good. Jesus can give that to them. But Proverbs 21, 21 says this, after what you were saying, Lisa, it says, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness, mm. and it's huge to me, will find life, righteousness, and honor. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, being on mission, righteousness, first Jesus is our righteousness, yeah. you know, and then kindness, which is 
you guys talked about Jesus being lowly and gentle. Mm, you yes. know, just I mean, the world needs so much kindness that mm. when we follow those things, then our kids and us will find what do we want? You, know, you mm. want that the life, the life of God inside yeah. of you and giving it away. But it just made me think of that. Just mm -hmm. Pray that for us. Up. Pray mm -hmm. that for us, honey. Unity and kindness. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Father, we just thank you for, even around this table, just um, how you are moving in your body. And yes. that is just so uh, humble and delighted to be a part um, of what you're doing and how you've invited us in to partner with you. Just so mm -hmm. thankful and full of gratitude today. And Lord, we ask that you just unite us um, as in our marriages. We're praying about marriages. So we pray mm -hmm. for these marriages. Every person that's listening, God, mm -hmm. we stand the gap right now yes. and ask that, mm -hmm. Spirit of God, you would mm -hmm. come and you mm -hmm. would um, just spark this hope inside of them today yes. and creativity mm -hmm. in ways mm -hmm. that by your Spirit, they can be unified together yes. as mm -hmm. one, Lord, and about the mission, the purpose that you put yes. into mm -hmm. the whole reason when you put these two together, each of these couples together, Lord, mm -hmm. you had a plan, mm -hmm. a, a great plan. We just declare a plan for welfare, not mm -hmm. calamity, yes. but the future yeah. and a hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. We pray that each one grace, Lord, to pull together, to call upon you, Lord, mm -hmm. and to um, look to you and to hear your voice and to see mm -hmm. um, how you are going to be uh, display your glory through them, Lord. Just yes. thank you so much. And Lord, fill us, um, yeah, just fill us, Spirit of God, with all of, um, yeah, all that we need today, each person that's listening today, to love their neighbor, to love each other, and even to love themselves, God, as you do. And so I just thank you again for your faithfulness. We look to you and um, just so thankful that yes. we have everything inside of us through Christ yes. that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. We just speak that over every person listening and ourselves. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.